here we're discussing the Young's double slit experiment where you have two slits really close to each other and monochromatic light that means light of the same wavelength single wavelength is allowed to fall on it parallel and the rays and the waves bend at all kinds of angles and it produces interference bands dark and bright bands on the screen so we're trying to find out the conditions for bright and dark bands in order to do that we pick a certain point on the screen at speed and when we look at the the paths that the waves have to take the path from s1 to p is shorter than the path from S2 to P, isn't it? That means there is a path difference. So L2 minus L1 will give the path difference. In order to find that path difference, a perpendicular is drawn from S1 onto this line. This delta L is going to give the path difference. From the small triangle, if you take this angle as theta, delta L being the opposite side is D sine theta. That's what you see here. So the path difference is D sine theta. And if this path difference is an integral multiple of lambda, then you get brightness. Why integral multiple of lambda? Because if you have a, a bright I mean, if you have a crest from S1 superimposed on the next crest from S2, because you can't have the same crest because the paths are not equal, that only happens at the center of the screen. By the by, at the center of the screen, the paths are going to be equal. And so at the center, you will get the fifth crest from S1 falling on the fifth crest from S2 and that produces maxima. So the central part of the screen is bright or it's a maxima. But as you shift away and come to a point like P, you could again get maxima. Why? Because this time the sixth crest from S1 may happen to fall on the seventh crest from S2. That means the path difference between them is one wavelength or lambda. But what if the sixth from S1 falls on the eighth from S2. Okay, now the path difference is two times the wavelength. So whenever you get a maxima, the path difference is going to be either one times the wavelength, twice, three times, four times, or in, in summary, whenever the path difference is m times lambda, where m can take values zero, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. You're going to get brightness. Sometimes we say it can take 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, just to show that if that's the central maxima, on either side you get maximas and minima. So plus corresponds to the top and the negative to the bottom part of the screen. So when d sine theta is equal to lambda, you get maxima. But if d sine theta is m plus half lambda, you get minima. How do you explain that? Now in this case, you know it should be a crest falling on a trough. So they cancel out. And what is the distance between a, a consecutive crest and a trough? It's half a wavelength. So that's why if you give m the value 0, you're going to get half lambda. If you give m the value 1, you're going to get 1 plus half, 3 by 2 lambda. Okay, so depending on what the problem says, if the problem says the second order, then you know m is 2. If the problem says third order, then you know m is 3. So those are the values m can take, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then let's try to work out a question on this. Okay, so if d sine theta is equal to m lambda, you get maximum. I'm just reiterating that again. 
And if uh, d sine theta is m plus half lambda, you get minima or darkness. All right, we, we talked about that. And m can take values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So let's assume that d, which is the distance between the slits, is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5 meter. We're using uh, light of wavelength 600 nanometer. Nano is 10 to the negative 9, so got to change it. And we're looking for the angle at which the third dark band is produced. Dark means we're talking about minima here. Okay, we have to find theta for the dark band. So we use the condition for darkness or the minima. Okay, so and uh, we're looking for the third. So uh, M can take 0, 1, 2, 3. And we go to D sine theta is, now what? Why M plus half lambda? Because we're talking about dark bands. And we're looking for theta, so we'll make sine theta the subject first, and then you have m plus half times lambda divided by d, when d goes to the other side, it goes to the denominator. m is 2 in this case, and you get m plus half is 2.5, so the answer comes out to be 5.74 degrees. So now the question is, why do you give the value of m as 2? Isn't it the third order? If you look at this and count, you will see 0, 1, 2. So there is also another formula that comes in which relates the distance of the band on the screen, which is y in this case, with the distance of the screen from the slits, which is L. So if you look at this diagram carefully, you can see the right angle triangle. And if you take, this is going to be theta, if you take tan theta, tan theta is opposite side by adjacent side. So tan theta would become y by L. So that's another thing that can come in because sometimes in problems you'll be given the distance between the slits and the screen and you'll be asked to find y. Okay, so that's when you use this additional formula after you get theta. So here is one question. Distance from the slits to screen is 1 meter and distance between the slits is 0 0.0500 millimeter. We are asked to find the y for the third order bright. Now we are talking about third order bright, maxima. So remember that. Now we use the condition for maxima first which is d sine theta is equal to m lambda we will try to find sine theta from which we will get theta. Lambda, is, let's assume it to be 600 uh, nanometer. It will be given in the problem. So now notice that M is 3 because it's a bright band. You give the same exact value for M as the order. So if it says third order, you give M is equal to 3 for bright bands. And when you calculate that, you get this as sine theta and then theta becomes 2.063. Next, use this formula, rearrange it to make y the subject. It makes it L tan theta. Uh, L is the distance uh, between the slits and the screen, which is 1 meter. So 1 times tan 0 0.063, 2.063 I mean, gives 0 0.036 meter. Okay. Now we'll work out a problem uh, to do with the diffraction grating. You know that diffraction grating consists of multiple slits arranged. We did this in the lab, so multiple slits arranged. And when light passes through it, if it's white light, it's going to be split into a lot of colors, the basic colors in white. 
and you will get many orders okay so that's what you're going to see it's a, a diffraction grating now and in this case the condition for maxima remains the same it's d sine theta is equal to m lambda but d is going to be represented in terms of the number of slits in a meter so d is 1 by n where n is the number of slits in one meter okay so when you know that you can substitute the value of d here as 1 by n so you get 1 by n sine theta is equal to m lambda and now the n can be taken to the other side it goes to the numerator and you get sine theta is n m lambda so let's assume that there are 6000 lines per millimeter did you hear that it's per millimeter uh, usually that's how it's oh but I'm sorry I gave it as per centimeter whatever so 6000 lines per centimeter and you're asked to find you given that the second order maxima is produced at 60 degrees and you have to find the wavelength so first of all 6000 lines per centimeter is how many lines per meter it's 6000 multiplied by 100 because there are 100 centimeters in a meter so you get that as n which is 6 times 10 to the 5 lines per meter so now plug it into this formula sine 60 because it's sine theta remember sine theta which is sine 60 is n which we got m is 2 because it's given that it's the second order We're looking for lambda rearrange that lambda is sine 60 divided by those two multiplied together and that gives us 7.22 times 10 to the negative 7 meter which is actually 722 times 10 to the negative 9 or 722 nanometers